Guys, let's get real about A-League ads. A-League ads are bloody awful. They all range from terrible to mortifying and are as uncomfortable as taking a bath with your dad. Seeing these failed attempts at marketing leaves you wondering if they were ever trying to connect to us football fans or to warlocks in a parallel universe where pain is the only form of currency. Check out the first ever A-League ad. Time has not done it any favors. It looks like an avant-garde wattle paint commercial featuring a cast dressed exclusively from JJ's. Seriously, who are these people? And why are they making a mess? It's a who's who of who's that featuring players that have the same star power as your average cat's anus. Look, it's Colin Targus, Ricky Spaghetti, John Orange. We had Dwight York in our league. Dwight York. Why was this headlined by Chad fucking Gibson? Also, who the fuck is Chad fucking Gibson? And what a bizarre tagline. Scissor, bicycle, spin? Excuse me, spin? What else did they have on the short list? Athlete's foot? Actually, this ad had two taglines because <laughs> why not? The second tagline was, it's football, but not as you know it, which I guess was a polite way of saying, we got rid of the wogs now. Anyway, this isn't that bad. I think the main reason I don't like this ad is because I hate thinking of a time where Scribe was once relevant. Ew. Next season, we had these things, the robots. Why in God's name did we have robots? The most elegant thing you could say about this ad is that it's fucking stupid. This wouldn't have been impressive on a Nintendo 64. The only people getting drawn into the A-League from this ad are people who jerked off to Tomb Raider's PS2 polygon titties. Season three continued the tradition of if you can actually turn your television's contrast levels high enough to actually see the ad, you're introduced to Pixar Stadium, and are left wondering how this ad somehow has more CGI than the fucking robots one. The fucking robots! But hey, this is the A-League after all, so the only way you'll see a packed stadium in this league is via post-production. This commercial birthed the famous 90 minutes, 90 emotions tagline. And after watching this, I guess those emotions are anticipation, excitement, and uh, dampness? What's with all this Harry Potter shit? Why is this bloke flying? What is wrong with this man's jugular vein? What is the bloody metaphor here? I'd like to remind you that this is an A-League ad, not a Quidditch match. Season 4 had quite clearly a big budget cut, and the most obvious example of this was that it starred Christian Sarkis? Really? Christian Sarkis and his widow's peak. Yes, if you're a fan of rhyme or reason, this isn't the ad for you. First impressions after watching this ad is, well, one, that's not a regulation size pitch, and secondly, what formation is that? 4-4 four, four, fucking 400? This whole ad feels ingenuine, crippled with overstaged trick shots and underwhelming action scenes. Also, with hindsight, it feels awfully bizarre to see people like Coffee Danning and Adriano Pellegrino as the talent in this ad. Even more bizarre is seeing Nathan Alassi, who I'm pretty sure got more minutes in this ad than he ever did in the A-League. But perhaps the most bizarre of all is seeing Mark Swartzer out of fucking nowhere. What are you doing in this ad, Mark? Last time I checked, you played in jolly old England, not in our little convict league. Still, not the most bizarre cameo in an Australian soccer campaign. The worst, by far might I add, was when Paul Hogan, for some unbeknownst reason, was the big reveal in our 2022 World Cup bid. $50 million well spent, FFA. After these hit and miss campaigns, well, mostly missed and missed harder campaigns, the FFA started to shift the focus onto fan culture and the match day experience, which ultimately was for the better. But there were teething issues. Can I help you? 
Do you have any body paint? Yeah. What colour? Both top sheets, eh? Yeah. Dog was about as big. <laughs> what the fuck was that? It's Better Homes and Gardens meets Green Street Hooligans with the comedic timing of a Thursday FC monologue. The strongest reaction someone could possibly have to this ad is... Heh. Look, if you want to have a laugh at our idiot fans, you do it like the rest of us, by riding public transport after the F3 derby. When you're looking back at this country's greatest sporting ads, your mind immediately wanders to the AFL's I'd like to see that, rugby league's simply the best, and of course, the A-League's stolen bedsheets thing. <sighs> This marked the end of the big money concept and brought forward the cookie cutter fan driven formula that the FFA hasn't strayed too far from ever since. I call it cookie cutter because they're all identical in tone. So let me summarize the last eight odd years of A-League ads. They always feature a coarse voice with an uplifting orchestra score behind him talking passionately about how beautiful football is. They play to your nostalgia, romanticizing childhood memories you can relate to. They intersplice it with footage of fan emotion, while all leading to the crescendo that it's not about the football itself, it's about you, the fan, your pilgrimage to the game, and all the emotion that comes in between. These ads shit me to no end because one, it's pretentious, and two, it's bullshit. Soccer isn't beautiful, it's a bunch of sweaty adults in shorts kicking a ball on a lawn for a bit. And don't tell me it's a sacred pilgrimage donning my $120 piece of polyester littered with fast food logos, paying $40 on inner city parking, $30 for chips and a pie, $10 for a lone mid-strength beer, only to see your side bottle it in the 89th minute against the fucking Mariners. But there is one ad that goes against the grain of the recent trend that I want to give a special mention to. And no, it is not the flossing one. Come on. You gotta have a team. Gotta have a team. Gotta have a team. You gotta have a team. You've got gotta have a team. You've gotta have a team. I need some help, I think. Now, even though Yoshi is a smug faced, pubeless dweeb who 1 million percent couldn't last 12 rounds in the ring with me, I will say this. This ad is fucking phenomenal. This ad works, and you wanna know why it works? It's because it's not trying to be pretentious. It's not hollow, it's not claiming to be a larger than life experience or something grander than it truly is. It's a call to action, compressed to a simple catchy soundbite that you yourself would have been asked countless times in the schoolyard, the office, at the park. Who do you go for, mate? And those are the ingredients to make a great bloody ad. And it worked too. It created buzz. You gotta have a team was bantered around like crazy. And that's what you need more of. Not David Attenborough telling me that soccer is beautiful because I get to hang around yobos like this who I can't figure out if they're pinging or are simply brain damaged. Also, Ange was really cold that day.